The Broncos thought they had their guy, but in the end, he couldn't hack it. Oh, oh boy, God, come on. That. That, that's so come stupid. On. That's so stupid. <laughs> That's how we're starting. So, so perfect. Oh, no, it's not. Goodness. Everybody has made that joke. No, your reactions. It was so worth it for your reactions. Nathaniel Hackett oh. is out as the Denver Broncos head coach. He sure is. And we are live coming to you from Studio A, where the A stands for another year, another head coach search. Wow. I cannot believe where we are sitting today. Six coaches in 10 years. Six coaches in 10 years. The Broncos have more turnover at their head coach position than a bar has a, uh, trying to staff their wait staff. I don't know if it's that uh, intense. We'd know. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically that. Uh, this is brutal. This is awful uh, for the Broncos from a long-term perspective and just when you take a step back. But obviously, where the Broncos were right now, they had to do this. It, it was to the point where one of the things Nathaniel Hackett had not done before yesterday was... One, get completely blown out, like we're talking 30-plus points. And then the second one was lose the team, and he completely lost the team yesterday, not just with uh, their, their effort or lack of effort on the field, but you have Randy Gregory play 11 snaps, <laughs> two <laughs> unnecessary penalties that he had, and then after the game, he punches someone. And by the way, breaking news just right now, Randy Gregory was suspended for a game. Good. For that, as he should be, uh, it, you have Dalton Reisner pushing the quarterback, uh, which was then caught on some video, which was released after the game, and it, it's a total mess and embarrassment on and off the field. You could have gotten insane odds on the Broncos firing Nathaniel Hackett before the season ends over yeah. at DraftKings Sportsbook if you bet that mm. before the season. Uh, what is it, Henry? Just the third coach? Yep. Third coach who's ever been fired before the end of his first season. The... Uh, Obviously, Urban Meyer last year, um, but then the other one was Pete McCauley back in 1978. He was fired before the end of his first season. There are two others that didn't finish, right? Um, but those two both left for college jobs before the end of the year. So thank you to our presenting sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook. I can't believe it. Um, I mean, I can knowing everything that happened. Right. Well, but yeah. It's, it's truly unbelievable. It is truly remarkable what an abject disaster this season was mm -hmm. from top to bottom, from start to finish. What was it, Zach? From long snapper to... Uh, all the way up top. All the way to the top. Yeah. Uh, Outside of Greg Penner. And Greg Penner From today. long snapper to, yeah. to George Payton. Yeah. Failure on everyone's part. Everyone's. Yeah. All across the board. Yep. He, maybe even backup long, long snapper because they did have a, a two long snappers. Yeah. True. Yep. And so you're right. In the end, you can't get embarrassed. Right. You can lose. People do it all the time. You cannot get embarrassed on national TV. Uh, you can't have Patrick Starr roasting you on national TV. Can't have it. You just can't have that. I've no. always said that. Um, <laughs> and what sucks is Nathaniel Hackett was a really cool dude um, who I think is the scapegoat for the failures of many, many others and himself. He is also part of the problem. Um, but my biggest takeaway from this whole scenario is maybe, just maybe, if you're firing a coach more than every other year, yep. it's not the coach. Mm, and that's why, from a 10,000-foot perspective of this, it's, it's really bad. It just shows how mm -hmm. much of a disarray not just the 2020 Broncos are, but the entire Broncos organization is is and has been and there's one thing that can give you hope about this and it's that there's finally new ownership in place and the ownership was a massive mm -hmm. issue in these past 10 years this is the first time that this ownership group will get to make a major move that's not anything dealing with Russell Wilson, that's dealing with the head coach, that's dealing with the general manager, that's dealing with the management of a football team. So if you want to be hopeful and think this is going to change and be optimistic that this is going to change, that's what you point to. Okay, Greg Penner's running the show now, and boy, is he running the show. He made that clear today. This has to be the, the least optimistic of all of the, the coaching searches recently, though. At least I feel that way. Just because, I mean, you're you're stuck. Like, the, the next three years are just Russell Wilson. And it, it, even if he's not on the roster that whole time, that's eating Russell Wilson's cap hit. Like, it just doesn't seem like they have a real path to be competitive for anything that matters. 
which is totally different than the last couple of years. You said, oh, they're a piece or two away. They're a piece or two away. Well, they committed to, to one piece, Russell Wilson. And I think that not only does that make it a little bit less exciting to be trying to find a head coach, it also means that the good head coaches are not going to be interested in coming to Denver. And you're going to have to find, I mean, they must believe that there is a coach out there that can fix Russell Wilson. They have to. I mean, it's your only option. Yeah. Like, even if you don't believe it, it's, it's your only option is to try. Or a coach <laughs> sells them on the idea of give me a year to tank. Uh, we're going to trade Russell Wilson. Here's my proposal for that. And I'm curious if they talk to any coaches in this cycle that do present that case to them. I would if they were interviewing me. And just yeah. take a completely different route? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I would go in there and I would say, listen, every person that sits in here is going to tell you, oh, Russ needs to do this more. Russ needs to do that more. This is how the coaches failed Russ. I'll just tell you right now. He's done. You know, you know what I say in that meeting? I say, all these coaches that you're talking to are, are telling you this? Open your eyes, people! <laughs> yeah, they would love that. If, if I were the penners, I would say... Uh, can I see your resume again real quick? How'd you get in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, Who say, are yeah. you? Uh, five times six? I can't even remember how many Madden oh, championships wow. I have anymore. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh my gosh. Six time Madden Super Bowl champion. Yeah. That is the They'd thing have that... to at least entertain the, the idea. Uh, oh, that's how you're presenting your resume yeah. to them. Oh, yeah. okay. I like it. Yep. Um, <laughs> we can get into in the second segment a little bit more about what they can do in the future. But Zach, you yeah. said something. Ah. You said something along the lines of at least this is a new ownership. Mm -hmm. Well, what the new ownership has shown me is that they're even less patient mm. than the previous mm. people who were running this, oh, okay, who were firing okay. someone more than every two years. Actually, I guess back then they were averaging one firing every two years every two at years, head yep. coach. Uh, they're saying we actually have less patience than that, ah. that's true. which I don't know if that's a good thing. Mm. Now, we'll find yeah. out. Um, but you can't do this every year. You just can't. So eventually you're going to have to get it right in We've kind of talked about how coaches are usually a 50-50 proposition, maybe at best. I compare them to quarterbacks. Like, mm -hmm. There's no real predicting. You can look at how guys play in college and say, we think that means they would be a good head coach. Uh, but there really is no telltale. If they do this, they can, they can be a head coach. So they're going to have to coin flip it again. What happens if that coach goes 3-14 and 14 next year? Are they going to fire him again? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Probably. They just set the precedent that if you do this, that you're going to be fired. Or is it if you do this and you're not our guy? Could be. Then you're fired. Yeah. I mean, it. the, the early returns are that the, the ownership group is a little bit trigger happy. We don't know that they're like really trigger happy because also I think everybody was saying you got to fire Hackett. But again, this has only happened three times in the history of, of football. And so pretty easy to say they're a little bit quick to make this decision now. If they decide they're, you know, getting rid of George Payton, there's another one where you say, ooh, that is another, a little bit quick, a little bit quick there. Or uh, if you move on from Russell Wilson, that's another one where you say, that's another quick change. And again, the, sometimes that stuff works, but, you know, the, there's good owners and there's bad owners. And, you know, Jerry Jones has a bit of that, like, quick trigger, and we want guys to do this and do that. So, I don't know. I always like the hands-off owner who kind of is there for the the good vibes and say like just just demands a lot and lets other people do other things. We'll see how this all play or plays out, but as of now, slight slight quick trigger is my read. Well, there's a there's another uh reason why you could say that, mm -hmm. Henry, and uh the ownership group decided to pay Russell Wilson with the advice of George Payton before mm -hmm. the season started. They didn't have to. So that that's another thing that you can point to and say uh that they that they want to do things quickly, that they want instant results. Mm -hmm. I don't view this right now as a bad thing. However, mm -hmm. if they do get a coach next year and they go four and thirteen, five and twelve, uh, something like that, well, and, and they fire him, okay, then it's two coaches in two years. So that's probably good news for this next head coach, right? Probably going to get more than one year, especially <laughs> because now this is Greg Penner's first time hiring a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and to be honest and to be fair, a lot of times that second year doesn't do anything for anyone. It hasn't for any of the other former coaches that have been fired. Vic Fangio, second year, didn't do sure. anything for anyone. Did he get three? He got three years, didn't he? Um, he so. two and a half. did. No, he got three. Vic yeah. Yeah. got three. Uh, Vance Joseph's second year didn't do anything good for anyone. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you just do it because you think 
well, yeah, it seems wrong to fire a guy after just one year. But also Nick Sirianni last exactly. year. Exactly, yeah. Sure. They were in shambles. Now, they finished the year a little better than, obviously, Nathaniel Hackett was looking to finish the year, but they were in shambles as well. Uh, and he was getting trolled for things he was doing uh, in Crazy interviews ass. behind the scenes and just everything and, and, and on the field too, yeah. And he came back, and now look where they are. So it's not always... No. The giving a, a rookie coach who's struggling a second season is bad, but it's always it's also not good. Yeah, and I feel like I outlined it last night on the show as well as I could when it comes to why this move had to be made. Coach came here for three jobs. One, be the head coach, meaning make all the big decisions. Mm -hmm. Failed at that so miserably they took it away almost instantly. Call the plays. Failed at that so miserably they took it. They took. Uh, it away from him almost instantly and get the vibes right mm -hmm. failed at that so miserably that you have players shoving each other on the sideline yesterday uh and grandy gregory throwing punches after the game which mm -hmm. it almost feels like it was premeditated the way he acted yesterday um and you just you you go oh for three on those things and you got 20,000 no-shows at the last home game, and you're getting embarrassed on national TV, mm -hmm. I can't blame this, the Walton Penner group at no, all no. for making this decision. But it is, I just, I worry that the problem is not the coach. The problem Definitely. is the players. I mean, I don't think the biggest problem was Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, I don't, I honestly don't even think, no, I guess he'd be third. Give he'd me your top, top three. three. Give me your top three. Number one's injury still. I oh. think... You flip the injuries around, that, of you. that changes more wins than changing out Russ or Hackett. But I go injuries, Russ, Hackett. Okay, I, I'm different than, really? than you. Yeah, definitely Russell Wilson is the number one problem for this organization. What have Going we said? Going forward, yes. What have we, and this year, what you have we said so. time? What, what's his touchdown to interception ratio? 12? I know he has 12, 12 touchdowns. Nine. Um, nine interceptions? I think it's nine. That is... I mean, he's the one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL, Definitely. if not the worst quarterback in the NFL. That is something that you just it, you're going to be hard pressed to to be yep. able to overcome. That's why the 2015 Broncos are so incredible, is they were able mm. to overcome that with Peyton throwing nine touchdowns to 17 interceptions, <laughs> which is wild. But typically, if you have this quarterback play, you're going to get these results. Now, yeah. obviously, Nathaniel Hackett's in there, but. I've talked about it a lot. George Payton is also in there because you talk about the roster that they have, the moves they made this offseason, hiring Nathaniel Hackett. That's all in his wheelhouse right there. Yeah. I'll lean with Henry just because I think if it weren't for the injuries, Nathaniel Hackett would still be the coach. Mm, true. So that, I feel like, answers the question is like, if they were healthy, they maybe could have won seven, eight games. But you have to keep coach. health into perspective. No team is going no. to be 100% healthy. For sure. so, so you're saying uh, you get Randy Gregory back, you get Garrett Bowles back, and maybe one other player back for like the whole season. It, that would still not be the league average, though. I mean, again, like nobody is close to these injuries. Like They put out the graphic every week, the pro football talk, and I don't even know what the numbers mean, but it's like .50 for the Broncos and like, 0.58 for second worst, and it only goes it goes up to like 100. Like, it is a ridiculous amount of injuries the Broncos have this year. Again, yeah, but, like, but, but you, league think average. About, you think about money too, and, and that's how a lot of those are, are measured. I just gave you Randy Gregory, 14 yep. million a year, Garrett Bowles, 17, maybe even 20 million dollar cap hit this year, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Tim Patrick, you know, 10 million there. I, I think it's Russ, and that's why when you look forward. Uh, you're obviously not going to, with the head coach, say, like, how are you going to manage injuries better? That's not going True. to be the number one thing you're looking for. The number one question is going to be Russ. Oh, yeah. totally. Either how do you fix him or what's the plan to move on without him? Let's talk about that in just a second. First, mm -hmm. never a better time to become a member at the DNVR.com. Become Oof. a diehard at the DNVR.com, where we are going to be covering this coaching search. <laughs> From top to bottom, because we know how to do it better than maybe any media members in the country. It's very true. <laughs> We've uh, we're very very experienced yep. with this. Yep, I was telling Ali, I'm like, all right, fire up the candidate rankings, fire up the uh, what was it, the head coach predictor. Yeah, all of it. Uh, it's all going to be going over at thednvr.com, where we'll also have a hot board of coaching candidates and anything else. Film rooms once they get their guy. Uh, great time to head over there and become a, a diehard. 
And if you want to catch the last game of this Broncos season, now maybe you're fired up. You want to show the ownership support uh, and get to one more game this year. Check out our friends over at Game Time. Broncos final game is in two weeks against the Chargers. Maybe whoever the interim head coach is, which hasn't been announced yet, will have the opportunity to play spoiler <clears throat> to the Chargers in some form or fashion. So check out our friends over at Game Time and use the link in our description, whether you're watching on YouTube or in the podcast side, the link's right there. Click on it it'll take you right to the broncos games and of course you can go to nuggets abs games and typically the longer you wait the better the deal is going to be so if you want to go to a nuggets or abs game this week make sure to check out game time and if you're uh, thirsty then go get yourself some mountain spring water from liquid death mm. um they've got a bunch of different kinds of of water they've got the still water they've got the sparkling water they've got actually three different flavors of sparkling water and uh, they call it liquid death because it is used to brutally murder your thirst. And uh, it's also infinitely recyclable. Their cans are. Um, they also donate 10% of the profits from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. Uh, it's it's awesome product. They give money to awesome causes. So go get liquid death at your local Safeway, 7-Eleven, King Supers, Stinkers, Alta. What the hell is Stinkers? Or find a stinkers liquid death. Stinkers gas station, yeah, baby. Gas station. The oh, skunk is yep, the logo. Yep, yep. I, no, I mean, there's there's better options <laughs> and gas than a skunk. Stinks, so it kind of makes sense in a good way, though. It smells a lot better Don't than a skunk. You like gasoline? I'm kind of indifferent on it. Really? Yeah. So you would put a gasoline candle in your house? Henry is the one who said he likes it. I would. You I would, would enjoy a gasoline it. Gasoline candle <laughs> I mean, in your house. I mean, I don't think I could light it for hours every day. Like I couldn't just constantly do with it. But it's Ooh. it's like a it's like a, a dessert sort of. Like, you just get a little yeah, bit, and you're like, oh, not. that's good. But you can't have more than that, you know? Yeah, you can have tons of dessert. Yeah. I totally disagree. Wow. I, yeah. wow. I Give me ice cream all the time. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, okay, I want to start here, guys. Uh, Wait, really quick, really quick. One mm -hmm. more thing. Hit us with a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. We'd really appreciate it. Helps us. Shows support to us as well. It doesn't support the Denver Broncos being a really bad team. So we'd really appreciate it if you hit us yes. with a thumbs up. And of course, if you're listening on iTunes or anywhere you get podcasts, also hit us with a five-star review. I want to start here because I find this to be a important discussion. Uh, and I'm just going to try and guide you guys in a certain direction here. So see oh if you boy. can catch my drift. This seems very, um, what's that word? Manipulative. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> the Broncos don't have an interim coach yet. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that? Um, I honestly think it's because they're going through their staff and seeing who's staying and going this, these next two weeks. Henry? I, I don't think they know. I think I think if they if it was somebody in the building, I think that they would have just said when they fired him, like this guy's gonna be our interim. Mm. I think that because I think they would have done that too. Yep. So I think because there's a pause, I wouldn't be surprised if it's somebody from the outside. That would be shocking. Yeah. But it's possible. Yeah. Think there's any chance maybe they thought they had their interim head coach and that person maybe didn't want to do it? Like from inside the building? Mm-hmm. Could have happened. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. I, de I think it definitely could have happened. Mm, and who are you talking about? Just think it could have happened. Just think it could have happened. Well, who, who are you talking about? Or, or like, why would this have happened? Like, what, what are you thinking? I don't know. Maybe the guy that they wanted was, like, really good friends with the head coach mm. and, you know, felt that the head coach didn't get a fair shake and maybe wanted to, like, take a stand in his favor by not accepting that position. Ah, so you're talking about the defensive coordinator, the Denver Broncos. <laughs> That's a person who would fit that description, yeah. yeah. And you know what? That is something that Nathaniel Hackett has going for him that not a lot of head coach. I shouldn't say not a lot of head coaches, but certainly not a lot of failed, miserably first coaches have, is a lot of people that like them and you know, support them. Frank Reich and was similar, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it, it's true. And, and guys that will stand up for their guy before kind of taking the, those opportunities. Justin Outen, good friend. Yep. Um, and, and you can look at a lot of guys on the staff, good friends. Maybe that's a reason <clears throat> that this thing fell apart is because you hire your good friends. Yep. Uh, but of course, w when you look at Dwayne Stukes, they, they met each other 15 years ago when they were kind of sharing the same cubicle back in Tampa Bay. And the same thing uh, with, with, obviously, uh, Evero. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Just something to keep an eye on. Um, where do they go from here, guys? Because I think the fact that the interim job isn't all that desirable uh, yeah. is a reflection 
of how desirable the job itself is. And I think they're in a bit of trouble here. And yes, I'll let you guys, I, I guess I'll let you guys speak on this first before I go where. Be, before we go there, mm-hmm. I think there's something very important that Greg Penner made very clear today. Yeah. Okay. In his statement, he said, um, when talking about uh, George Payton, he said, whom I have uh, confidence in. As the general manager. So confidence Classic in, in George. Confidence. He's not going anywhere. No. Yet. No, yet. Yeah. Um, and then he said, I will lead our head coaching search with support from our ownership group and George. And that's when he said, who, I'm, who I have confidence in is our general manager. That's huge right there. Mm-hmm. This is a guy that five months ago said he doesn't do football things. He, he, he's here to mm. lead the organization, lead this. Five months later, not only has he done so many things on the business end, and, and a lot of good things, obviously $100 million. He's been so busy getting in, meeting people. Uh, but now he's going to be leading the most important search. He's going to be leading it. I'm not quite sure how much confidence he truly has in George Payton there. And so to me, this does change the way I view this ownership or, or th- this head coaching search. He's leading it not George Payton. Yeah, and it's a really easy thing to say um, as a CEO or an owner uh, to say, I'm just going to let the people who are hired to do their jobs do their jobs until those people, earmuffs, start fucking up their jobs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then you got to do Wait, something. Don't we do on earmuffs now so people know? On earmuffs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, like... I, I often do this, and in, in our business is nothing like an NFL team, but you know, Brandon can say, hey, you guys are the Broncos guys. I'm going to let you guys run your show, and I'm not going to get involved. And then all of a sudden, if this show starts getting like four views, <laughs> he's probably going to step in and be like, all right, something's got to be changed here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's, that's where Greg Penner's at. Uh, I feel like he's saying, I can't trust you to do your job, yep. so now I have to step in. And that's a bad deal for everyone. It's a scary place to be yeah, it is. when literally just a couple of months ago, he says, I- I'm not doing football. You know, I know football, but I don't know the inner workings of football. And now he's saying, I'm taking control of this thing. And it does make you wonder, OK, is there going to be Jerry Jones situation moving mm-hmm. forward where the owner mm-hmm. then becomes the GM, then is talking to the mm-hmm. media all the time? We're certainly not down that route yet. But with this, how-, how can you not at least think that that door is now open to the possibility? Exactly. And again, I mean it's I, I want to go back through the whole Jerry Jones tenure at some point and just see what exactly happened because he did win Super Bowls early on mm-hmm. it also seemed like he was slowly grabbing more and more power and the team slowly became more and more irrelevant so I don't know there's there's pros and cons to everything I think it's the right decision for them to say we are leading this coaching search because again at the end of the day how does it work like the owner does have final say when it comes time to, to say, like, is this our guy? Is that our guy? Is that our guy? It's going to be the owner who says, yep, good decision. We're going with it, regardless of who's leading it. So I do think getting out in front saying, I'm running this thing, I like to see it. And I know I said I, I want, like the hands-off owners, but I feel like this is one of the few situations where it's time. This is, this is an owner decision, I think. Oh, man, when you, excuse me, when you hire a general manager, that's mm-hmm. his number one job, in my opinion, is is head coach and then obviously roster construction. I think this is taking a lot of power away from George Payton. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I, I think that's the right move um, because especially when it comes to the head coaching position, how could Greg Penner have 100% confidence mm-hmm. and let George Payton lead this right now? You, you, you just couldn't let him do that after uh, what he did this year. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's a it's a weird thing. Uh, I don't think. I guess I would put it this way: if you don't trust the person in that position to make that decision, then I don't think they're the right person for you. I hundred percent agree. Mm-hmm. And so, don't you think this is kind of showing? I don't trust you fully. A hundred percent. And especially just, I just can't get over George Payton is supposed to be leading the entire organization on the football end, yep. and now Greg Penner stepping in. Yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. Zach, you've been on this for a while, saying essentially if you're gonna fire Hackett, or if you're yeah, if you're gonna fire Hackett, you gotta fire Peyton. I don't know if it's necessarily that stark, but I believe this is the beginning of the end for him. Um, 
unless you know they nail this next one and Russ comes mm-hmm. back and but like I said yesterday, if Russell Wilson keeps playing at this rate, everyone's getting fired. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Except for Greg Benner. Literally Except, everyone yes. else. Because yeah. he can't be fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every person that can get fired is getting fired. You think Rob maybe steps in and is like Greg, what are we doing here? <laughs> Actually, you're fired, too. Uh, I guess he could be fired. This team. <laughs> going to uh, carry us to the promised land. You uh, know what? Rob couldn't be fired, though. That's for sure. Unfireable. <laughs> you know what my dream scenario is at this point? What's that? You keep George Payton as GM. You go get Jim Harbaugh mm. and make Jim Harbaugh one of those coaches who... I mean, he's yep. not GM slash coach... But he has a lot of say. And I know it's risky, so, but you're at the point where you need an old school football guy who can just whip a team into the shape. Like this be friends with the team thing. That didn't go well. Like you need to to practice hard during training camp. You need to work hard during the preseason games. You need to grind out and act like a real football team. And for all of his flaws, which I'm I'm, I'm not a Jim Harbaugh fan. I I actually the exact opposite. I think that if you let him come in, he could at least get this into a real football team. Give him a little bit of, of power, which is kind of like a slight demotion for George Payton. Let him keep running the drafts. You know, I think it could work as well as any other solution. So it's a perfect transition into what I was going to say, which mm-hmm. is this team has to get desperate to win. Not desperate to like make a weird, crazy move. Desperate to win. Mm-hmm. I look at a team who was a very undesirable job, who made a bold move and damn near turned it around mm-hmm. overnight. Of course, it's my buffs. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. They were desperate. I was thinking of the Lions. They're 1-11. Mm-hmm. That, that job didn't look desirable to anyone, but they got desperate, and they said, we're willing to do something that for some stupid reason other teams aren't willing to do. Let's go get Coach Prime. Now, I don't think there's a Coach Prime hire out there for the Broncos, Mm-mm. but I think they can take that mentality. You know what they also did? They changed the transfer requirements. Now they have, you know, the number three transfer. They did things and said, we have to make everything on the table if we want to be competitive in football. College, pro, very different. But I think, Henry, you're pointing to something that is a desperate move. Mm-hmm. And that's that can be taken in the wrong context, a desperate move. But I'm saying is, we are willing to do anything it takes to win. And that might mean offering someone who's making $10 million a year right now, $20 million a year. Now, if it doesn't work, you look dumb again. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Nah, it's owner's money. It's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They have unlimited money. $20 million <laughs> a year is nothing to them. Yeah. That also doesn't impact salary cap. And it so does- you're not hurting the team. So whether it's Lincoln Riley, which, by the way, I don't support these college to pro hires, but it would be the big splash move. Very different from last, or not this time around, but two times ago when you're all about that cliff train. <laughs> yep. Yeah. See how we see how we saw how that one. New <laughs> fair, information fair, has fair. come to yep, light. Yep. Yep. Uh, I don't think it. I just don't know if it can be done. Um, and so. Oh, yeah. You just have to do something drastic. Yeah. If that's Sean Payton, which doesn't sound likely, that's your drastic decision. If it is a Jim Harbaugh, who at least I know he's done it in the NFL. Yeah. Yep. That's a drastic decision. You have to say, you have to realize that the current mold of just being like, well, who's the pool of candidates? Okay, well, we like this guy. Hasn't worked at all. And, sorry, were you done? I'm right there with you guys, and we're already seeing that door open with Greg Mm -hmm. Penner taking away some control of George Payton Mm -hmm. in this coaching decision. We've already seen that he is okay taking power away from George Payton. And I really can see this being a John Elway, Brian Zanders sort of transition. (laughs) Brian Zanders was the general manager when John Elway was hired. John Elway was not hired as a general manager. He was brought in as the vice president of football operations. Then uh, what happened? Brian Sanders helped him for a year. Mm-hmm. What well, was the draft guy, knew all the ins and outs of that, had the relationships with the scouts and agents. The John worked with him for a year, then said, okay, I'm the vice president of football operations. You're gone. I'm the general manager right now. I could really see that happening, and that would be the big-time move. You're not doing that for a first-time head coach. You're doing that to get Sean Payton, to get Jim Harbaugh. You're not bringing these guys in and saying, you report to George Payton, then George Payton reports to Greg Penner. No, you're saying you guys are side-by-side, and heck, it may even be if you're able to get Sean Payton, you just report straight to Greg Penner. George Payton 
reports to you. You're the one that's making the draft picks. George Payton is going to give you the intel throughout the year from what him and his coaching, er, him and his scouting. scouts find, but you're the one that's making the decision. And we've already seen that I believe that that door is already open for that, but that's what you would have to do in order to get a Sean Payton along mm-hmm with giving him more money than any coach has ever made in NFL history. Because when you look at this job, it's not appealing right now, unless you 100% believe in Russell Wilson. And again, I think you'd be crazy if you 100% believe in Russell Wilson right now. So you're going to have to give him more power than he's going to get other places and more money. But the money thing, and now that we see that the power door is open to give to a new head coach, I think he got a shot yeah. at, at, at any coach right look now. Look at Tim Connolly. I don't think Minnesota Timberwolves GM position was that uh, attractive of a job. What they do, they give him a slice of the team yeah. and life-changing money. Yep. And, w- and he left a place that he loved to go take that because he said, I have to do this. For- it's the best decision for my family. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you can, especially with $70 billion, uh, you can make some waves and you can make some things happen. Um, and also when I talk about being desperate to win, it means you have to leave everything on the table. You cannot say we're only taking um, guys who have been head coaches before. You can also not say we're only taking people who tell us how they can fix Russ. You have to say all options are open. So if someone comes in and tells you, hey, here's the plan. Cut Russell Wilson. Cut everyone else, essentially. Half of your starters. Come back with the worst team the NFL could imagine next year. Get the number one overall pick and give me Caleb Williams. And that's how I and that's how I fix your team in three years. You have to listen to that. You at the very least have to hear it out, and then you have to go have a postpartum meeting afterwards and say, "Was he right? Right? Is that the move? Because what if the move is Lincoln Riley, and you're and you're saying, okay, we're gonna double his salary, give him twenty million dollars a year, and we're gonna hire Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley is gonna tell you the path to get Caleb Williams. Yeah. Uh, so again. I don't know yet what the perfect answer is, and I don't even know if there is a perfect answer. But you have to be open to everything, and that includes cutting Russell Wilson. Everything has to be on the table. And it should be. When you're in this position right now, uh, this team is not just one move away. They tried to be one move away from years and keep making it, keep making Somehow it. Somehow went backwards. And then did the biggest move to try to get there this year, and not just went backwards, went drastically back. Remember when we mm-hmm. thought it was rock bottom with John Elway here? It, it, it's got so much worse. We have never seen a season like this since John Elway left, or, or, or since Peyton Manning left. This is as bad as it's ever been. Yes, they just lost to a four-win team by 37 points. When they played the worst team in the NFL record-wise, the Houston Texans, the crowd was counting down the play <laughs> clock. I mean, yeah. there have been so many things where if, if it just one of these things were to have happened mm-hmm. in a season, you'd be like, wow, what an embarrassment. And now this is all of it's happened in one season. Of course, Nathaniel Hackett had to go, but I don't want them to just get caught in a, a little vacuum and say it was just Nathaniel Hackett. We get one one coach and we're going to make worlds of difference. No, they're, 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 this thing is a mess in so many places. And I just hope that Greg Penner takes that to heart and doesn't just say it's just one person we need to change real quick guys we appreciate all of the interaction uh in the comments but let's keep it respectful of each other of us of everyone involved with the team uh if you're being toxic you will be put in timeout there we go yeah th- th- this mm-hmm. is uh this is supposed to be a, a great community and i yeah. think for the most part it's a fantastic community and again we really appreciate everyone tuning in right now I think we cover coaching searches on the podcast end, on the YouTube end, on the written end, on social end, better than anyone else. So if you're just listening to us for the first time, make sure to subscribe to us, hit us with a thumbs up, Mm -hmm. and tune in, because we do this for people that are new. We do this uh, five times a week, if not more, and we're on it whenever there's uh, any news going on. We have so much to talk about now. Like Nothing's going to happen coaching-wise for two weeks. So we get two weeks to talk about this before it even starts to blow up well 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 actually okay things could happen before then with the broncos moving on from nathaniel hackett right now actually 
You know what? Let me first give a shout out to DraftKings okay. Sportsbook, where, yes. as Ryan said, you bet $5 on any NFL team to win, and they win. You get $150 free dollars in your account. And uh, if you're down on the Broncos, like I think every single person is right now, just in terms of how they're going to do this week, they play the Chiefs in Oof. Arrowhead. They haven't announced their interim head coach yet, and we're sitting here Monday afternoon. Place $5 on the Chiefs to win. $153 in your account if they it's win on money. top of the winnings. Yeah, pretty much free Ooh, money. New coach game, though. It's true. New coach game is not going to be able to <laughs> overcome this one. I'm sorry. Uh, so check them out over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, use that promo code DNVR when you sign up. New users bet $5 on any NFL team or game to win, and you get $150 free in your account. Check them out. There's so much action. Tonight, guys, who do you like? Chargers minus 4.5 playing the Colts in Indy. Jeff Saturday, interim head coach. The only thing I'll say is it seems too easy to bet on the Chargers. That line does seem low. Seems really low. And the Chargers have everything to play for. They can clinch a playoff spot for the first time in God knows how many years. Um, So it feels like that's way too easy. (laughs) That's all I'll say. You smashing the Colts then? No, I'm too scared. (laughs) The Colts are terrible. Colts might just be able to run on them. There's no a Jonathan chance. Taylor, don't forget. Oh, is he not back? He's done for the year. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm telling you, it just uh, it's fishy. Still might be able to run on the Chargers. You would think, I mean, your only hope for the Colts is Nick Foles. Ah. Uh, what a sentence. Big dick Nick. <laughs> oh, Let's go. Wow. <laughs> your only hope is Nick Foles. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it's the one once. thing you look worked, at. It worked once, yeah. It did work once. Um, so check him out. DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR. And see our show notes for details. And head on over to Sports Fan. One of the cool things about Sports Fan is that, well, I mean, they have a lot of jerseys. You can buy whatever jersey you want. Buy one, get one 75% off right now. That too. But uh, they also have a lot of jerseys that aren't from this current team. So if you aren't in love with a lot of these players on the Broncos right now that have won four games, you can go get yourself a Steve Atwater or a Floyd Little or a John Elway, of course. All these Broncos legends, they have so many cool jerseys. They have so much other cool stuff that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, SportsFan has awesome products, awesome promotions. Uh, There's four locations, one one on Federal that uh, is where we hold our tailgates, two on the 16th Street Mall, one at the Park Meadows Mall, and it really is the, the best Broncos gear you can find anywhere. All right. Zach, you were saying... Things could happen. Mm, mm-hmm. Things could happen. The NFL, I believe two years ago, changed it, where if you fire your head coach at any point in the season, with two weeks left in the season, you can start talking to potential mm-hmm. head coach candidates. Real quick, why would they incentivize that while also sending out that email about don't fire your coaches so hastily? It, it's, it's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think the reason that they opened it up was kind of like free agency when now there's a legal tampering period is, period yeah. is because they were like, well, this tampering is already happening. Mm. So now we're going to make it legal tampering. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. Now, it probably also makes it where now coaches are being talked to four weeks before the season's over. But now officially, the Broncos can talk to candidates that are with other teams right now if they want. We'll see if they start doing that tomorrow right after their press conference. Greg Penner and George Payton will be talking to the media tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm sure we'll be going live right after that, so make sure mm-hmm. to stay tuned for that. Uh, but do they jump on a private jet and start hitting city after city, or do they wait until the end of the season? Or if they have their eyes on a guy that's in the playoffs for a long time, do they wait until February? middle of february to make their hire before we hit <laughs> super chats we've done this before or should we wait until after the press conference because the time we got it right yep. with fangio yep, let's... was after the press conference yep uh and then we didn't get it right last time we thought it was going to be dan quinn is that the name this time around dan quinn yeah no because it's not george payton's search it's not george payton's search I think you might be on to something. I also think maybe George Payton, the only reason why he still has a job is because he says, hey, Hackett wasn't even my guy. Dan <laughs> Quinn was my guy. But we didn't have the money uh, to or the, you know, the situation to get him. How's the situation gotten better to get him? Maybe Dan Quinn loves Russell Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Been together I, before. About after this year, I, I don't know about that. I don't know if anyone does, except for Sierra. Gosh, and there and is, kids. there is going to be that narrative from some people mm-hmm. that we're going to see more and more 
uh, over these next few days and couple weeks is, whoa, no, it, it was a committee that hired Nathaniel Hackett. Don't put it all on George Payton. It was a committee that did it. George Payton's the only one from that committee that is still around. So if I don't think Joe Ellis, well, Joe Ellis actually wasn't even Throwing in on Smythe the meetings. under the bus? Yeah, it, wow. that's just not the, I'm never going to buy that, that yeah. it wasn't like George Payton's call of this. So one, don't get fooled by that. And then two, the second one uh, is that the Broncos, George Payton maybe was, or Dan Quinn was George Payton's guy, but the Broncos just didn't have the money to do it. Okay, I know Dan Quinn got a raise to go back to Dallas, the Broncos would have been able to compete with whatever that raise was. He's still a defensive coordinator. He's not out here making $10 million. So I'm not going to buy that as covering for the Broncos. I think it's going to just end up being Dan Quinn or Frank Reich. Ugh. I know. I, I know. don't think so. I think those are George Payton moves, though. And obviously, George Payton's going to be in. He, he He's going to have Greg Penner's ear. And I imagine Greg Penner admitting just a couple of months ago he's not a football guy and making football decisions that he's going to weigh on him. So I'm not saying that those aren't going to be in the conversation because I certainly think they are. But I just think with Greg Penner having input, I don't think it's as easy as those two. I think it's Harbaugh. I, I honestly do. Like if I, if, if I have to put a... Which one? Uh, <laughs> Jim. Jim. It'd be nice if it was John. Again, I'm not like a jim harbaugh fanboy but i think it all just adds up like like i don't think you're getting sean payton i, I ju it just the vibes no. are pointing him yeah, toward la yeah, for a yeah. bunch of reasons i do think this Brandon ownership Staley gonna get fired after making the playoffs <sighs> i mean i think mcveigh might leave too oh well, one of those la great. teams i feel like yeah i think uh i i think that he is like the blend of experience first of all how many experienced coaches are there it's him it's dan quinn it's frank reich Anybody else we want to add to the list? Pat Shermer. Oh, no, no. <laughs> let's. Okay, new rule. We don't talk about Pat Shermer until the Broncos have a coach. All right, fair. Yeah, um, everybody in. Fair rule. Because it just gives everyone like <laughs> yeah, this yeah, I know. Nobody <laughs> needs that right uh, now. Joe Judge. Oh, you know, there's he a lot of experience. former experienced guys. Oh. Just keep going <laughs> through the Patriots. Oh. I've only right just now. named the Giants. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why don't you go to a former Detroit Lion? How about this one, Brian Flores? Mm. I get, he. I would add him to the list. That's real experience he had. Yep. Things went well. And I was gonna say he was actually good. But I think like the the owners are gonna want to make a splash. They're more than willing to blow money, which means they're gonna blow money. I think. And I think just everything, especially what does this team need? They need to get bigger and physical or and tougher and all those sorts of things. And, and that is Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh is Dan Campbell, but proven. Mm. And that's exactly what they need at this point. And the players might hate it, but I. I think a lot of things point me that way. I think that uh, if it's not him, I'll take Jared Mayo. Just like that Ooh. CEO type, you know, like obviously worked for in bi the business world. I could see that appealing. Not to surprising Penner that well. Henry loves Mayo. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true. I think it's Gerard, right? Yeah. Gerard. Yeah. Gerard yeah. Mayo. And the Broncos interviewed him last time around, which was, oh, less than a year ago. That It, it just feels like... What's it like to cover? Like, what's it like to cover the Steelers? What's it like to just have an off season that's off season? I don't wow. know. It probably <laughs> gets boring. I would assume. I bet it does get boring. <laughs> yeah, especially for us, it would get really boring yeah. because we're yep. just we're just conditioned to be like, you have to find a quarterback, you have to find a coach, you yep. got to find a GM, an owner. Yep, yep. Nope. You can just always continuously be looking for something. Yep, that's what they are. Yep. Uh, constantly looking for something, and I don't even know if they know what they're looking for. I'm not quite sure either. And that's why tomorrow is going to be so fascinating. Yeah. Because in every other press conference that Greg Penner has been a part of, it's been a celebratory thing. It's, you're the new owners of the team. Now you're introducing Condoleezza Rice, the, this incredible cast of people that they brought on to be owners with them. And then the next one was, we're giving Russell Wilson, who's a nine-time Pro Bowler. We're giving him a massive contract before anyone sees him play. It's all been happy. This is the first one where he's having to to talk to the media with things going completely south. Well, last thing I'm just going to throw out there. Do you think there's any chance? How do we have four thumbs down? Do you think there's any chance that we have thumbs down? That Russell Wilson retires? Nope. No. Because he'd be walking away from a hundred and... Mm -hmm. 50 or yeah, the, the guarantees were 160, yeah. so yeah, 130 mil. Yeah, and he'd have to give money back. Uh, would he have to though? 
I'm not sure. Yeah, typically, like, typically it goes to court. I'm just thinking I'm not there sure would what be happens. like an under the table agreement. We'll we'll toss you an extra fifty. So in this first year since signing his contract, I believe by the end of March of this year or this coming year, he will be given eighty million dollars mm-hmm. in cash for this new deal. If the ownership wanted to, they could get that back because it wasn't eighty million dollars for this first year. It was $80 million yeah. as a signing bonus that's then through your contract. But you do bring up a good point. Ownership could say, we're gonna, we're, we're just going to let you have the 80 if you walk. That's what I mean. And maybe like some other things too. You know, you can just make like under the table business deals. And I think that would still impact the cap though. But it would probably be not as intense. Yeah, I mean, you could probably just cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Bowen skirted the cap. Yeah, yeah. Tip with cap though, the the money, and I don't know exactly how it'd be if he retired, would work. But also remember, Russ is the ultimate competitor. Even last night, he's saying I always have lows and I always come out on the other side. He's been preaching that. I I just don't think he's going to uh, to do that. All right, before we hit these super chats, uh, a poll that I didn't even know existed oh that I am a gosh. big fan of. <laughs> There was so many people in the comments talking about it, so I had to do a poll. RK for head coach. Oh, my God. In the comments, 54% say yes. Man, the honestly, people are on my side. surprise it's not more. <laughs> That's kind of a damning poll, actually. I have bad I'm news sorry, for Ryan. the 54%. The Broncos offered me the job today. 10 mil a year. Turn it down. That's not true. Yeah, you're, you're, That's s- not you're stupid, true. Ryan. <laughs> yep. yep. Just kidding. I would take the job. <laughs> yeah. Just for the money, but I would fail. But the money's there. Ten million a year. Yeah, exactly. How many years are you getting? Four, five, ten? Yeah, I just walk out with forty million dollars, and Boom. everyone, all of my favorite people in the world, Broncos fans, hate me. Can I have some scoops for that first year, though? Yeah, I'll toss you. Some Great, scoops. thank you, thank you, mm-hmm. thank you. I'll come on the show every week. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, I love it. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett might have done that in a different world. Yep. If things yeah. were good. Yep. Very sad. Man, yep. started week one. Honestly, though, some coaches are going to say no, whether they end up being the person or not. Especially first, a first-time head coach <laughs> has no incentive. I mean, unless they don't think they're going to get another job. Right. But an attractive coach looks at this situation and just says, okay, so my only chance of succeeding is fixing Russell Wilson. Let me turn the tape on real quick. Someone, not everyone... Someone is going to say that's not fixable. And by the way, you have to do it in the first 15 games yes, of the season. Exactly. You, you don't get yeah. two years. That's what I mean. It's it's the harsh truth is that this job is bad. It's a bad job. It is. Yep. You're stuck with Russell Wilson. I mean, is is that the worst contract in the NFL right now? It's the it worst has contract based on in NFL. Results, yes. It's the it worst has contract to be. in NFL history right now. Yeah. I mean, it has to be. Like, who is signing up for that? So, unless, again... It's got to be someone who's been with Russ, seen Russ, or ha- you know likes Russ and wants to continue that, or someone who's just you know. And, and there are these people, crazy like a coach that just says like, "Nope, that was all Hackett." My system, my offense, that's gonna work. And there, there will be people out there that do that, but there will also be people out there who says who say, "Hell no," because I that's that ship is gonna sink. And if I'm a first time head coach and I'm on that ship. I'm going down with it, and I'm never coming back up. But then don't you also think that second-time head coaches will say, I got fired the last time. I want to be set up for a good opportunity now. Like, it, it, I, I agree with you, Ryan. Um, and you kind of already speculating that maybe they've already been turned down for the interim job doesn't surprise me and just shows the situation that they're in right now. And, by the way, the Broncos' defense, which, remember, Evero is maybe going to be the head coach after this season if they fired Nathaniel Hackett. The Broncos' defense has given up 33 points per game the past three weeks. Yeah. A lot of people in the comments bringing up a name that has been in every, damn near yeah. every cycle, Eric Bannemi. That's one that I think, if you want, you could have. Yep. Of course. Because it doesn't seem like anyone else has wanted him. And there's, there's a reason for that. Um, and I think it's been documented more from what's happened in Kansas City the past year and a half or so with just behind the scenes there's just um i just don't think people trust him to be the manager of Mm -hmm. a team obviously the guy knows football incredibly well but you can just take a dive back into it into his history he has a lot of things that why people haven't hired him yet i have two like competing feelings in my heart one is that i'm gonna hate this hire just have a feeling 
Uh, and not because it's like a bad hire, just because it's a boring hire, such as a Frank Reich right, right. or a Dan Quinn. Yeah. Um, the Ugh. other one is like they're gonna pull a rabbit out of the hat somehow, some way. Something that no one saw coming is going to happen. Uh, and you know that would be like a Jim Harbaugh or like some coach that we don't know who's actually doing a really good job is like unhappy with where they are, and so they force their way out to go to the to Denver. But like a trade for Mike Tomlin, yeah, something a trade like that. for yeah. Sean McVay, a trade for Kyle someone, <laughs> right? That won't happen. But I mean, uh, a potential trade. I don't think we should. Uh, to your point, Ryan, I don't think we should completely cross that off or. The one that everyone would love, Peyton Manning. Oh, yeah. Give me a break. I bet you they might that end up be, calling him for the interim job. That would be the pulling the they rabbit out of the hat, time. though. That would be the yes. biggest move they could make. No Absolutely. chance Peyton would do it. No, I mean, again, we've said it before. Peyton Manning could have any job in the NFL he wants. Any job in sports. Yeah, any job in sports. If he said, I want to be the head coach of whatever, they would make him the head coach the next day. I, I totally agree. But is there a team that Peyton would want to be with more in terms of the organization, the, the brand, of, the no. team. No, then the Broncos. You give him, I'm not talking half a percent of ownership. You give him 10% of ownership. To be the coach? To be the, to be, well, no, no, no. He's coach, GM, he is everything. I'm saying, Ryan, that is the uh, CU Deion Sanders move. That Someone, is the biggest move that you could make. I just said Deion smart. Sanders in there. You, you stay away. That uh, you think you think John Elway's happy he took the job with the Broncos? Like, look of at course, his really absolutely. I, I don't know. He won I don't a think Super Bowl so. With it, yeah, yeah. but a he lot did. of people aren't remembering the Super Bowl. Maybe ten years from now, that's what people remember. But I think he really hurt his legacy in Denver for what he did as GM. These past two years are looking good for John Elway. I know, but that's yeah, it's not how it's remembered. Legacy isn't. John Elway won a Super Bowl as a player and an executive. That's what he'll be remembered. Yes, but if he never. Uh, became the GM, people would only have good feelings about he, it. He would be revered still, which, I mean, some people still do, but I think there is a lot of it where it's like, well, John Elway did this dumb thing. John Elway can't draft a quarterback. John Elway, And, and uh, it, it could have been just so easy for him to be the guy who shows up twice a season to the stadium, gets the biggest applause of anybody in the Colorado history, mm. and, and that's just who he is. Like, anything he is a step is down that, from but... being... You don't. I, I, there I, would have been I zero negative feelings about him anywhere, and there are negative feelings. Now. Yes, I don't think he regrets that though. Getting the uh, third ring as being, a competitor, it one, doesn't surprise. Becoming me. only one of a well, the competitor part is winning a Super Bowl. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a competitor, I think he's like, nah, I, I needed to feel winning again, and I did. Yep, yep. And Peyton, he was at the Broncos game, uh, the last home game they had. He's he goes well, to every single game few. still. He is still yeah. extreme. Yeah, he is still extremely attached to this organization i just mm-hmm. don't think he ever envisions himself being a coach probably I think not he would take george yep. payton's job if, if offered or at least would consider taking george yep. payton's job i hope i hope greg penner makes a call to see if that's something he'd be interested in they should call yeah. peyton manning about every opening they ever have yeah 100 <laughs> percent. unless yeah. it's insulting imagine though if peyton takes over as head coach and next year he's seven and ten all of a sudden all of like the shine of peyton manning yeah. being one of the greatest ever it's like yeah Eh, that's dis- not so great. I disagree with that. Really, seven and ten would be an improvement from this year. It would be it, an improvement. It would be pointing but... up. And you know what? 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 He would another get the ultimate benefit of the doubt. Of course, from the fans for at least a while. And you know the thing about George Payton, and I, and I know I've been hard, but look what he inherited. At, where were the Broncos at when, when he took over? When when John Elway left the team? What was it? Uh, was it were they seven and nine? Was it six, six and ten, nice. something like that? Seven and nine sounds about right. Then, no. se- so seven, seven and nine, I think that's right. Okay. And then they go seven and ten last year, so kind of a step down. Not really, but like it didn't get better. And then this year, it's going down. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is why. I mean, I'm down on. At it. the very least, John's at you know uh, Cherry Hills Country Club being like, I could have done better than that. Yeah. Right. I right, still right. legacy wise though, I think yeah. again 10, 15 years from now. Nobody's gonna remember exactly when Elway left. That's why it's Peyton all just gonna be, be this era that he was partially in control of, where it's like, oh yeah, remember all those things that happened. Yeah, but also Henry, you're only talking about the negatives. Not only a Super Bowl, but he True. he constructed one of the best defenses of all time. And he the constructed best the best yep. offense of all time. He won four straight AFC West. Like the, it's not just yeah. like one good season surrounded by a, a lot but of bad. You aren't comparing him to like being good. He left as a back-to-back Super Bowl champion. 
like a the god, you can a ever god lead. in Denver, a god in Colorado, and then made a couple of mistakes. And then Again, he, he made the Broncos another. He didn't make a couple of mistakes. He he made incredible moves, got them to the mountain. Uh, but he did that too. And again, that's why I say like if Peyton Manning goes seven and ten next year, like uh, that that lowers his standing in Colorado. It does. It does. I, I think you're both right. Um, it's John got a taste of something that he craved mm -hmm. and delivered us the third championship. All his fingerprints are literally covered on every Lombardi yep. trophy in that building. And I think he, he carries a lot of pride in that at the same time, there wouldn't have been a single negative feeling about him except for maybe like a fan who he didn't sign an autograph with when he ran into him at a bar mm -hmm. one time in, in Colorado. Um, then there are now there are, and there's even like mm -hmm. people in this comment section saying things about John LA. So, uh, it's both. It's both. Peyton, I think, is smart enough to take a role where he's never directly tied to the wins and losses. Yep. Potentially. Um, I don't know, just because Peyton is the ultimate competitor as well. He, he is, too. Well, that, I didn't expect us to talk Peyton Manning today, but here we are. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's hit some Super Chats before we get out of here. Appreciate everyone who's tuning in, especially those of you who have uh, tossed us some Super Chats here. All right, from Valley Bandit, being at the game yesterday was so sad. The sadness in the eyes of all Denver fans was telling. We knew it was over in the first 11 minutes. Here's to hope of a better year next year. Cheers. Yeah, um, I don't know about the first 11 minutes. I'd say the first game. The end of the first game, there were questions. No, no, he means yesterday in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. Yep, they were down 17-0, 11 minutes in. The yeah. vibes went off the rails after game one, though, like you mentioned, and never came back. Yep. Completely lost out of control. Yep. Crazy. And uh, in many ways that we could have never predicted. Yep. All right. From Darth Swartz. Uh, Broncos country, save yourselves a lot of heartache and get your mind off Sean Payton now. He's not going to want to come here. He's not that stupid. It doesn't sound like it. Yeah, and, and I certainly don't think that the Broncos are going to be able to land your, your Sean Payton, but I think there is a path. More money really? than you could ever imagine. Uh, the law firm of Peyton, Peyton, and Peyton. Bring in Peyton Manning as uh, president. Then you have George Peyton under, working Monty under Leach him. This isn't going anywhere. <laughs> so it would be the law firm of Peyton and Peyton because one Peyton would be gone. Fair enough. You can only get two Peytons. Yeah. Unless uh, Peyton Manning wants to be Sean Peyton's offensive coordinator. <laughs> wow. Quarterback coach. Russ, no one closer. Hey, we saw him study in film one yeah, time at, at the facility. That. Or it was just for a picture. God, I would not, love. I would sure. love to hear Peyton Manning's un, uncensored thoughts on Russell Wilson. Do you though? Yes, that could be tough. I know. That could be really tough, Ryan. I. It would be. <laughs> wow. What? The, like, I don't think there's even a price you could put on that. Oh, Peyton Manning man. sitting in this chair right here, unfiltered on Russell Wilson. What percent of Broncos country would be tuned in? One hundred eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Wow. Like, not everyone would be live, but every single Broncos fan would end up seeing that. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one from Dylan. I can't remember who said it, but I think uh, they're keeping George Payton to fix the mistake and see what he can do to recover. RK or Zach said earlier they may keep Payton to fix it, and if he can't, he's out. Yeah, I think it's. I think they also might be. I don't know. It's hard to say with with the firing the head coach because if you were gonna go down the Russell cut Russell Wilson path I would have said guess what George and, and Nathaniel you guys have to bear the cross of going 0 and 17 next year yeah because I'm not gonna pay someone to do that and then fire them I'm just yeah. gonna pay you since I'm paying you anyway and exactly. you've proven that you can lose a lot of games <laughs> oh, man. Yep. yep uh next one Darth Schwartz again how can Wilson still walk into that building no he caused his head coach his job uh, and he's the main reason the locker room is the way it is. Uh, I don't think that's fair, one. But two, it's just not how Russell Wilson thinks. That is not how Russell Wilson operates. I, mm -hmm. would, I would almost guarantee that in his heart, he doesn't believe he's the main issue. Oh, oh no, 100%. You're completely right. Now, I think he takes some blame on himself and says, mm -hmm. I have to be better. But in his heart, he thinks they... I like. I was set up for failure. His post-game press conference last night was the most um, self, not, se not, not that he's not self-reflecting in the past, but kind of the most, he was the most down on himself mm -hmm. um, and kind of understood how bad the situation was more than ever. Because Russ, and 
It seemed like a great thing about him. Such a positive guy, always looking for the positives. And that's great when you're when you're two and one and winning and things are looking in the right direction. But it just gets old and it not only loses fans and media members, but it loses teammates. And I think he started to get that. And and his post game press conference reflected that last night. Twelve mm-hmm. touchdowns to nine interceptions, man. Nine. Yep. He averages like I think it's 29.7 touchdowns and 8.7 interceptions. Or he did in Seattle. It's just unfathomable. How yeah. is he this bad? Yeah. He's 34. And that's the Joe. concern. Is this a down year, ready to pop back up, or is this it? That's something that the new head coach will be tasked with. Oof. Next one from Cody. He says, DMVR podcast all day, every day. Thank mm-hmm. you so much, Cody. We love you in the chat. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Cody. And the little Kev rounding us out. Thank you for the super chat. It says, I feel like Bruce Arians would be a perfect fit for this team. And listen, you don't just go from being one of the best QBs in the league to the worst. That's the hardest part for me to oh, even really? like wrap my mind around. I mean, Peyton did. To Fair. one of the worst. I mean, Brady's kind of fallen off. We've seen it there in Rogers. Like we saw it with Phillip Rivers. Well, like crazy. I do think you kind of you'd lose it overnight, in my opinion. Ben Roethlisberger did. Eli Manning did. What's interesting about Peyton, though, is he also had a historically good defense, mm-hmm. and he was able to get the number one seed in the AFC yep. while playing like that. There's <laughs> yeah. a big difference between that and potentially getting the number one pick. Yep. Well, what does that say, though? It says that it's not just Russ, it's the roster. And injuries are factored into that as mm-hmm. well. But again, I really hope they don't just... I hope they I hope they don't have your view, Henry. Yeah, I mean, I think because even I think if you that'd do, be a very dangerous spot to be. Even if they do, I still think they'll change is. Because all I think is that average injury luck or average quarterback play or average coaching, what results in more wins added to what you did? I think Javante alone could give him two more wins in a couple of those close games. I don't think that's enough. Like I think that gets you up to six or seven on the year. Yeah, I'd say probably seven on the year. That's also not enough. You still need a bunch of changes. Yeah, the question is like, what would Derek Carr have looked like with on this team with all these injuries? Like, I and I don't know the answer. I think they win six games, seven games, six. I, mean, I guess it's around they, the same. They range. definitely look better. No, they look better. It fair to say Russell Wilson is the worst quarterback in the division. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. But how many more games do you think they win with Derek Carr? Um. Uh, as opposed to four right now. I mean, quarterback, it's the biggest one. Yeah. Three, three more? Yeah. So, seven. so again, same range. Yeah. Seven, but then there's seven and, uh, what is it, seven and eight going in the final two games of the yeah. season? Yeah. Yeah. Chance you, you're in it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. Crazy. Just crazy. Um, all right. One more here from Casey. Trade Russ for low draft pick. Wash our hands. Not, not happening. Um, yeah, good luck trading. And still, if you yeah. trade him, uh, as we outlined a couple of weeks ago, which and we'll continue to talk about, uh, you're still, your team is just still done in terms of yeah. cap space for, the, for next year. If you want the details, we did the full podcast on that like a month ago now, mm-hmm. a month ago or so, but basically you lose every good player. Um, at this point you'd that be trading away contract. Yeah. You'd be trading away Russ on a three year, $63 million deal, 21 a year. That's too high now. At the time, I was like, yeah, maybe that's what he gets. That's what if he's a free agent, it's three years, 10 million if somebody wants to take a flyer. And the the one thing about that one is you could get out with no additional cost after the first year. If, if he was just team. a regular street free agent after this year, I think he would make more than that. Someone would be willing to roll the dice on Russ. Yep. Mm, a not, month ago, I would have said it's right at that 21. They're still making him like compete in camp, probably, but I think he's probably still getting over 10 million a year. So interesting. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Jameis Winston got fourteen million per year after throwing thirty interceptions. How many this touchdowns? offseason? Yeah, yeah. well, this, 30, 30 touchdowns. Last year. Was that that wasn't last year? At no, no, that was no. Like three that years. was a couple, oh, yeah, couple years, ago. years ago. That was before. So you probably made sick. more than that that year. Yes, last definitely. Year, uh, next one from Diane. Just a nice super chat. Appreciate Thank you, Diane. you, Diane. Appreciate you tuning in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then another one from Little Kev. I feel like a lot of the stuff that has been going on has been coaching because look at Baker Mayfield. He was great yesterday because of coaching. Yeah, certainly. Um, and uh, was there were a lot of. I mean, they had the running game going. That's the biggest thing you can do to help a quarterback. Why the reason 
the Broncos won the week before. Exactly. So if you give them the running game, that's a start, especially an offense with a bunch of bootlegs. Throw in, like, the rest of the Broncos' defense wasn't doing much either. That helps them out. But, yeah, coaching with Sean McVay, that's a big piece. Didn't help against the Packers last week, though. That's what I was going to say. Oh, so Don't br- just look at one game when deciding things. The week before, uh, Baker had 118 passing yards and an interception. The Broncos' game plan was also ass and they made no adjustments on the defensive side of the ball, and the players didn't care. I also, this does not matter at all, but I think it could be tough playing a game when you're coming from, like, zero-degree weather to going out to 82-degree L.A. and playing it. Like, I just think that, Give me again, I don't think, it, Give I don't think me that's what break. happened. But I do think that I, that would be... We need to cut his mic That would be tough. That's, that would I be think tough. that's an advantage. Stop. You think it's an advantage? <laughs> yeah. You've just been living in this hellscape trying to like Henry on get Saturday in Denver when they left it was fifty. They didn't go yeah. from zero to eighty in like an hour. But yeah, like you're just living a different world. Like Give me know. a break. I don't <laughs> think it helps. Give me a break. If you could pick a team, you'd take that other team. Uh we did have that opportunity. We all took the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well I didn't not in, You didn't no. think about the weather. If if you have any if you could pick one or the other, I'd say I want my team to be that team. The one that didn't have to change the weather? Yeah. Okay, fair. The one that you didn't pick. Justin M. West Coast offense have broke Russ and PFM. I think PFM's body uh, broke him. Yeah. I yeah. think so, too. Oh, Diane's coming back. Uh, QB is the most dependent position in all of sports. I hope the leadership understands that. Our roster is not even close. I think it's actually the other... I think QB has the most control. Mm, yeah, pitchers well, I mean, have more pitchers, for sure. Yeah, pitchers. Wide receiver Kickers is certainly ha- more dependent than quarterback. Yes. And, 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 are, and, yeah. and you look, and that was another reason why it was so exciting that the Broncos got Russell Wilson as co- great quarterbacks, elite quarterbacks, raise all ships. They make bad offensive linemen average, average offensive linemen good. Look what Peyton did with receivers in Indy. And, and Tom Brady as well. You get these guys who are no, and then they're pro bowlers. The very next year. Some of them are even Hall of Fame bound. Mm-hmm. Great quarterbacks raise the play of everyone yes. on the team, including the coaching staff. And that's what just scares the hell out of me about <laughs> Russ is it's like he is he's not having any impact of that right now. Again, I still think like in my opinion, he was never that guy. He was never raise all boats guy. You're looking mm. right. I'm throwing that out there. The I think way it, this year's gone. Like I think he was. You do? I mean, yeah. He those playoff runs, like you look at it, what they win the Super Bowl, he averaged 175 yards a game, three touchdowns, no interceptions though, and completed 60 percent of his passes. Like that's didn't didn't run the ball either. Like yeah, but it's it was like the clutch plays that raised the boats. Mm-hmm. It was but, it was his fourth quarter play. Yeah. Now what is damning is what Geno Smith is doing this year in terms of numbers and 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 things like that in the offense. Seattle's defense is bottom 5. And now I know they have a losing record now, but 7 and 8 with a bottom 5 defense like shows Geno's doing a great turned, job. I, I mean, mean, he's a pro bowler. Yeah. He's a pro bowler. It's insane. It really is and damn, the Seattle Seahawks and their fan base have loved this season but the, and that's what i mean though about the broncos needing to evaluate like the roster ask yourself why was russell wilson good there and horrible here yeah why is gino good there when he's horrible everyone else where or everywhere else yeah like you have to answer that question not just keep firing coaches and hoping the next guy is going to make it work the seahawks have have sputtered after their really hot start this season little uh pete carroll the denver no. <laughs> oh god no definitely not yeah <laughs> if you want someone who can put russ in his place that get is, the most out of him yeah but even the, those players complained that he didn't do that <laughs> they're like oh now pete's willing to call out russ he never was when we were there <laughs> mm-hmm. well he certainly knew how to get the most out of him he absolutely did uh and the broncos now find themselves most likely searching for just that the person who can get the most out of Russ. We'll see if they find the answer to that question and how much the most really is, if they can get the most out of him. Yep. Um, but this is a different coaching search than it has ever been for, for the Broncos. Uh, and it's going to be fascinating, fascinating to follow. And on the way out, Casey hits us with one more super chat. Gino Pro Bowl dead. Yep. Yeah. Share a trade for Gino. 
<laughs> Should have traded for Baker or just signed Baker. Oh, He's a free agent. Mm, uh, another decision that didn't look very good. Like I said, it's going to be an absolutely fascinating coaching search uh, to follow, and we will be following it every single step of the way, five days a week, sometimes more if news breaks on the weekends. Um, We're excited to cover it for you guys. We appreciate everyone who tuned in today. We hope we got some new eyes that will be coming back, and we will be with you, as always, tomorrow.